when you make a mistake, a big mistake, which they call blunder, you're forced to uh, realize or try to realize why you made that mistake. And in chess, it humbles you because when you make a, make a big mistake, you you just simply have to not dwell on the the problem, the issue, and you just sort of have to try to fight with what you have. And that cultures your brain for the next time. And I'm wondering if some of that is some of the inputs that you have to your evaluation of a move, uh, what not to do. You know, it's interesting. I, I want to first make this comment. is a quote by a famous grandmaster from of old who said, it often takes 40 moves to win a chess game, 40 good moves to win a chess game, but only one bad move to lose. Yeah. Yes. So you can play all these great moves. You're, you're a super freaking genius. You're amazing. Look at what you're dropping on this player. And then you make one big mistake, that blunder you're talking about, and your whole game is shattered. It's, it's completely irrelevant what you did before. You're dead in the water. Thankfully, humans are fallible. The reality is we are. So we make those mistakes. But the ultimate benefit to chess is that, that we learn. The lesson is losing is learning. Mm -hmm. Losing is learning. You have to confront your errors, analyze them carefully, try to figure out why it is that you made them, fix the problem, and don't make them the next time. Right. That is actually, I just gave a, a five-step process that's easier said than done. Because it is very hard to fix issues when you have certain tendencies. As we know in life, certain tendencies stick. Mm -hmm. And you can make that mistake, and then you make the same mistake the next time. And you go, what is wrong with me? Am I an idiot? No, you're human. Right. Right? So we, we do that. We analyze very carefully our errors as chess players, everyone on every level. Uh, if you play in tournaments and you want to do better. And that is where we try to learn those hard lessons so that we can do better for next time. And there's something that is really important that has happened to our society that I feel is, is absolutely a negative towards the growth of the society as a whole that we experience on the, on the micro level in chess. And that is this idea of failing. If you fail these days, you're going to hear about it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Right? Everybody and their mama is going to know that you fell flat on your face. And what that has contributed to, by and large, is a sort of risk-averse society. Because you just don't want to make that big mistake that's going to make you look foolish. I mean, there's so much societal pressure on kids. You, you get the rise of suicides among young people because they're, they're just being harangued in front of their peers mm -hmm. for any flaw. We're not allowed to have flaws right now. Any mistake is just, you're gonna get cut up with a knife. But what we learn in chess is that failure is growth. Learning from your failure. You have to make those mistakes in order to grow. And, and so if, if failure is growth on the individual level, failure is growth on the societal level as well, as well. You need to be ready to take chances. You need to be willing to push the boundaries. Tiger Woods redid his swing, even when he was hyper successful, and ended up lose ended up losing tournaments, ended up not performing at that same high level for about eighteen months. And people are like, "Why'd you change your swing, man? You you look stupid doing that." But he had that mental fortitude to say, "I need to improve." And then eighteen months later, boom, it was on another level, and suddenly playing, golf, winning everything. Like what happened? It it finally clicked. And so I just want to make this point for your listeners that whatever chances you need to take, banking on your growth, even if it means you're going to fail, and, and it may, you may even fail spectacularly in the short term, be ready to embrace that for the long term. It's part of your growth. It's part of what you need. And don't listen to the haters. With that, um, you know, as a, as a, as a coach, as, as an athlete, you you often hear people sometimes convince themselves that they can't do something. They they convince themselves that they can't do something either because of you know, some roadblock or someone, some other person. 
uh, I didn't have this, I didn't have that. Um, I can't perform as well as other runners. I have short legs, or I, have, I can't be a great swimmer because I have short arms. Or, uh, always uh, a reason why they can't do something. And I think what chest does, it forces you, when you're, especially when you're down, it forces you to just fight with what you have. Fight with what you have. You may be down some material, and you're trying to just fight. You just, you're forced to fight with what you have. And oftentimes, uh, you know, as you know, you can be down material and still win. <laughs> yes. Actually, I have a my dear departed friend, Ronald Simpson, who I played with here in Brooklyn. He was one of you know, the important warriors that I used to battle in the parks and at each other's homes. And he had a, one of his favorite saying was, the will to win is greater than any material deficit. And that's the kind of warrior attitude he had, the gladiator spirit. I don't care if I'm flat on my back, I'm, lo I'm l missing an arm. You come with it or else I'm taking you down. Right. And, and I think that people, people trust reality a little too much. Yeah. Right? It's, it's the dreamers that change things. And if you, the famous quote, if you think you can't, then you're right. Right. Well, you you know, you've got to get your mind right. And that's the part of being a grandmaster.